Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to set up Oracle Enterprise Manager, which is also called as OEM, OEM 13.5 with Oracle 19C. This particular setup is done on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.8. What I'll do is first I will explain all the steps that are necessary for us to set up the OEM server. And once I have explained all the steps, we will start with actual lab. What we need is we need to download Oracle OEM 13.5 for Linux because we'll be doing this on Linux. Make sure you download the Linux version, Linux x64 version and also download the Oracle 19C home for Linux. To download this, you can choose your favorite browser, search for this, search for download. It will give you a download link. You can see there is a download link. This is the Linux version. Download all of these five files. It's a big software so that if you have slow connectivity, it will take some time. So it is always better to download it first and keep it ready. And this is can be freely downloaded. You just need an Oracle account. If you do not have an Oracle account, create one. If you already have an account, sign in and you can download. Make sure to download all the five packages and keep all the five packages in the same directory. Do not keep it in the different different directory. We also need to download the Oracle 19C for Linux. So you can search for that and you can say download and this one will give you this particular link. You can download the RPM or you can download the DB Home. The choice is yours, whichever both are completely fine. I am going with DB Home. I have chosen DB Home. However, you can choose the RPM version. Again, you need to sign in to your Oracle account. If, if you do not have one, create one. So once these two softwares are downloaded, then we can go ahead and build the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is also free for the developer, developers. So you can download the Red Hat Enterprise Linux from the Red Hat website. Again, it's free. You need a Red Hat account, Red Hat developer account, and you can download the Red Hat ISO. You can also use the Oracle Enterprise Linux if you want. You do not have to, you can, this particular steps will work perfectly fine on Oracle Enterprise Linux as well. So you can use Oracle Enterprise Linux also to perform this particular setup. Allocate at least 12 GB of RAM for your virtual machine. Lesser is fine, you will get some warnings. Networking, you need to have two networks, one public IP. The public IP, for, you need the public IP for your, your so that it can connect to other host and you can connect via PuTTY. Uh, and make sure to have the IP come online automatically. Set up the ETC host. Disable the firewall. In the ETC host, we'll add the IP address of the OEM server. And we will disable the firewall in the reason of that because it needs to communicate with other hosts that you are monitoring. So we will disable the firewall. The NTP crony, that is also important. Why we need NTP crony is because we need to make sure that the, the service the the time then that the alert is registered is matches with your server time with your database software so make sure ntp crony is up and running we just need one oracle one user the will create user called oracle which will be the owner of oem as well as oracle database we'll create the necessary directories for installation of oracle home and oem will these directories needs to be owned by oracle we will install a package called Oracle 19C pre-install. This particular package is pretty important. It sets up all the kernel parameters, etc. Sets up all the permissions, etc. So this is very important. Uh, we can manually set the kernel parameters that is time consuming. So it is always better to install this particular RPM package. And then uh, even after installing, there will be some kernel parameters that it will not set that you will manually set unzip the database software the software that you have downloaded unzip it then using the run installer uh, the run installer can be found under the database software where you have unzipped under that you will find a utility called run installer using the run installer install the database software using the netca create the listener using the dbca create the database for the oem repository then you will set some you, Prepare database means you'll set some SP file parameters for the OEM repository. Once all of this is done, your database part is done, you will install the OEM 13.5 and 
and optionally you will implement the oem start and stop scripts so these are the these are the steps that you will be doing to so this is optional we will just i'll just show you how to set up the script so that you can start and stop the oem so once this particular exercise is done you should be able to have your oem server up and running it's going to take some time it's a lot of steps are involved so it's more half of the steps are about creating the database installing the database software etc if you already know that then you can you don't have to refer to this document you can directly create a database and set up the database so you you might have to go to step 17 because there are some sp file parameters that you might have to set up so once your database is ready you go to step 17 and then directly go to 18 and 19 you can skip all of this if you know how to set up the software so but however this particular tutorial is for the beginner so i am i'll be covering all the steps so so the 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 name the machine that i have got so let me connect to the machine so let me connect to the machine this is the machine the machine name is db1 if you see the it's a it's reddit 7.8 as you can see it's reddit 7.8 machine name is db1 i will be changing this machine name to oem using this particular command the reason of that is db1 is my machine with the database so i'll be changing this to oem you, you you don't have to do that however i have another machine called db1 where the database is installed which i will be using to monitor using the oem server so the two hosts will have the same host name that's why i'm changing the host name to oem so that's done now if i run host name ctl you can see okay it got disconnected the connection got disconnected because we changed the uh, the machine name so let's close this that is perfectly fine in fact what happened is my machine went down for some reason so let me launch the machine once again so the, i have powered on the machine again the host name it changed to omdb.com that's good the ip address i if i show you if config the i ip address is still 192 so what we'll do is i will change the vi etc host i will change and i will add the ip address to this value so let me do that so the this is the this is the 1909 will be the ip address of my oem server so i will we have to change this particular ip address inside the machine as well which i will do in a minute what we will do is we 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 do not need to have the firewall the firewall if we have to have the firewall it will conflict so we might have to set up the some rules for the firewall to communicate with other host that we are going to monitor so let me for this is our lab so i'm going to stop the firewall service disable the firewall so that it doesn't start next time and i've st stopped the firewall we will create we will create the users and group the dba group is already there however there is no oracle user so let's do that id oracle you can see that there is no such user so if i try to add the dba group it will complain because the dba group is already there which i have already created so that's done if it this, this user group was not there we could have created the group using group add command however it is already there the next part is i'm going to create the oracle user that's done so i've created now if i run id oracle you should be able to see we have oracle user called dba remember i'm not using o install group i'm using the instead instead of using o install i'm using the dba group you can use o install if you want there is no hard and fast rule that o install has to be there that's done the next part is the password i'm setting the password for oracle user so that's done this is the password eco password i'm setting the password for the oracle user that's done then also what i'm doing is i am adding the oracle user into the sudo sorry the group dba group into the sudo hours, which means the oracle user can run any sudo command without password because i've said no password as well 
so that's done so that's all good so we have created our user called oracle the next part is we need to install some packages so for that reason i will be setting up the local repository if you have internet connectivity and subscribe to red hat you do not need to perform this you can directly install the packages from the red hat uh, repository however my machine is not connected to internet and that's why i will be showing you how to create a local repository so let me let me clear the screen let me first create the directory where i'm going to mount my cd-rom so that's done if i go to cd-rom if i go to cd-rom you can see there is nothing i am inside cd-rom there is absolutely nothing so now what i'll do i will mount so before mounting i'll try to mount the disk However, I have not at inserted the disk. So this command will fail. You can see no medium found. So let's go to the virtual box. Let's go to the settings of the virtual machine. Go to the storage. Go to this empty. Click here and we will choose the 7.8. That's done. That's I we have inserted a disk. If I now show you settings, you should be able to see the disk in the storage location the 7.8 disks that's done now if i run the mount dev cd rom it says instead of no medium found it says red protected which means we have inserted the disk and if i now go to this particular location and do ls minus l instead of total zero we should be able to see the cd rom contains so we have successfully inserted our media into the machine now we are going to copy this media repo to etc yum repos d this particular file is what we will be using as our yum repository so if i clear the screen this particular file the media repo is what we, from the cd-rom will be copying to etc yum repository so to do that i will run this particular command so copy CD-ROM media repo to etc yum repos d that's done then what i'll do is i will go to this particular location change the permission of that particular file to to be, because we need to edit that particular file so that's done clear the screen vi media repo you can see this particular lines are already present what we need to do is we need to add additional lines to this particular file so these are already there so these are the three lines that we will be adding to this particular file save that particular file and type yum update and this is fine the system is not no package is marked this is completely fine so that's done so now we have set up our local m repository we are good to install some mandatory packages so let's let me run all of this command and whatever packages it's missing is going to so some packages are already installed and some ksh is not installed so it's installing that's done you can see and x term is also installing so it's all good so we have installed the mandatory packages so once we have installed the mandatory packages there is this 32 bit version the 86 bit version of this particular package that is needed by the oem that i will manually install and because it needs some other dependencies i am going to use minus no dot depths option no dependencies option this particular file you can find in the cd-rom packages the dvd drive so i'm going to do that so let me copy that and let me run this and you can see that particular package got installed so our mandatory packages got installed now what we can what we need to do is we need to install these two packages the oracle database pre-install this particular package you cannot you cannot install this particular package unless you don't install this is mandatory so let me do that so let me show you that if i try to install if i try to install this particular package it's going to fail it's going to complain that this particular package is not there so let me do that so you can see that it clearly says that compat is not found the reason of that is the pre-install needs this particular package so what i will do is i will install this particular package and this particular packages i have downloaded on my local machine 
from where i have downloaded them if you have internet connectivity you can use the curl to download these particular packages if you do not have the internet connectivity go to this particular link so take this particular link and if you see here if i search for this particular package you can see that you get this rpm just click on this it gets downloaded you can see it got downloaded and the another one is the pre-install also in the same yum repository so you can see oracle 19c pre-install click on that and it gets downloaded so these are the two packages so let's install these two packages so as i mentioned we need to install this first so let me do this together now it will not fail so first i installed the compat lib std c++ that got installed now i will install the pre-install and that got installed successfully this particular package will set the kernel parameters for us so if i now go and show you this particular file then you can see that all of these parameters for oracle 19c they got automatically set did i set them so if i do this if i do this this particular values were set by the oracle 19c pre-install package automatically so it solves our problem we do not need to manually uh, set the kernel parameters otherwise we have to figure out what are the values and etc however the pre-install does it for us so that's a good news the next part is some of the uh, kernel parameters it will not set which we will set manually so let's do that so let me clear the screen vi and here i will be adding this three values so let's do that so let i don't need the firefox so let me close this and copy this and put it here and that's all good so let me save this particular file and one more we need is in the sysctl conf we need to set the net ipv4 range which is already there but it is a different value the oem needs it to be at this value so we will take this and what we will do we will delete the existing value and we will insert the new value we could have commented out the existing value however i decided to delete it so that's all done let's reload the new values using sysctl minus p and you can see the new values got loaded so that's all good the next part is the creating the mandatory directories so what i will not be using i will not be using the u01 opt i will use the directories and everything is your choice everything is customizable this is my oracle base this is my oracle home this is for the oem middleware and this is for the oem agent all of these directories i will be using the root to create these directories so what i'll do is once the directories are created i will change the permission to the 777 and oracle dba so let's do that this particular directory will be already there so let me start from this so let's do this so let me copy this really clear so let me create that's all good so the directories are created i will change the permission that's all good then i will change the owner of those directories to be oracle dba because root has created them so that's all good now i will verify that the directories are created and they have write permission so you can see the directories are created all of these directories will be empty so if i show you pwd ls minus l this is empty so this is my database home this is database base this is middleware for oem and this is the oem agent so the, the directories are all set up the next part is the ntp service so this is to make sure that our time is synchronized with the oem server the oem server time is synchronized with the oem so that's why we are setting up the ntp service so that's all good the next part is i have at not change the ip address so let's go to 
so location services next let me let me show you how to set the ip addresses next okay so that's fine i don't need this so let's close this let me log in as the log let me okay it's don't allow me this is the first time we are logging to oracle user so the we will be presented with this option so click on next click on next location services we don't need it click on next click on skip start using red hat enterprise linux so that's all good so oracle user is set so let's verify id oracle that's good so let me make the font slightly bigger so that you guys can see my screen even i like it to be bigger so let me make it 16 so that's all good the that's so we have successfully logged into the oracle user now what i have not done as of now is although i added the ip address in the etc host as the oem 109 but if you see the ip address of this box you will be still be able to find 1.101 i did not change it so let me now since i've logged into oracle user let me go to this let me click here we have to click on the right hand side top click on the, the ethernet port click on wired setting click here make sure this option is turned on otherwise the ip address won't come automatically online so the network interface will not come online so make sure this option is checked go to ipv4 change this to 109 click on apply turn it off turn it on that's good and now if i run the if config you should be able to see the ip address it changed from 1.101 to 109 and now if i say ping oem we should be able to see that we are able to ping to 109 which is the ip of my oem server so that's all good you can choose whatever ip whatever host name that you want you can choose that so that's all good so we have successfully set up our box the ip is set oracle user is created the kernel parameters is set uh, everything is done and now we are at the step where we are ready to install the oracle software before doing that what i will do is i will set some of the kernel parameters so, sorry the bash rc profile in in such a way that i have oracle base and etc set already so this is how i'm going to set so i'm setting the oracle base the oracle home the sid so this makes my life easier also your life it will make easier because we do not have we will not have multiple databases on our oem server so every time whenever we launch the terminal we don't have to set the aura env to oem rep or the the oracle base or oracle home because we are not planning to run any other database on the oem server this is the only database that we are going to run so this is how i have set my the bash rc of the oracle user so it makes our life easier so that's all done so let's now actually extract the software so the software is present i have already downloaded in this particular location make sure to extract sorry make sure to extract the software using the oracle user because it needs the permission if you extract okay so it did not get copied so let me so let me copy it yeah and if you see under this i have already downloaded this particular software so let me show it to you this is what we are going to extract and we have to extract so you can see this is the software lin64 linux64 so let's clear that and this is and we will extract it in the location which which becomes the oracle home so otherwise we have to extract move rename the directories etc etc a lot of extra steps so let's extract it this is my oracle home i'm directly extracting the software and i am using minus qq option which means it will not show me the files that it is extracting it will do it quietly so let let me do something like this let me 
let me go to let me otherwise let me open the oem server and let me go to that particular location ls minus l is completely empty and let's let me run this particular command it does not give you any output however behind the screen it has started extracting as you can see june 21 the software is getting extracted the software extract this particular software is pretty big software the extract process the unzip process is going to take some time let me pause the video and come back once the unzip is completed the software is extracted and if you go to this particular software again as the oracle user if you go to this particular location under this particular location this is the oracle home under this particular location you will be able to find a file called run installer this is the utility that we will be using to set up our database or set up our database home so let's run this and make sure to run this using the oracle user so this is launching this oracle installer click so let me try to see if i can figure out if i can get the xming working so my xming is not working so i have i don't have a choice to show you i thought it will look pretty fine so anyway that's fine so we can choose option number one or option number two if you want to create and configure database as part of the installation that is fine however you can choose to set up the software i will choose the set up the software and then once the software is installed we will create our database so set up the software only i'll choose the option number two click on next single instance database installation yes we do not need rack so this is fine click on next enterprise edition click on next the this particular variable it automatically picked up because we set up the bash rc so that's why it set, used this particular variable automatically that is a good news click on next the ori inventory dba that is fine the all the permission i'm not using as i told you i'm not using o install i'm using the dba group only if you want you can use the D o install group as well that's your choice i'm i keep my things simple so dba group click on next automatically run configuration scripts if i can if oracle is making my life simple why not so i will this is the root ss script that needs to be installed executed as part of as as a privileged user or as a root user so i'm giving the password of the root user click on next and it's going to perform the checks if all checks are completed which means whatever setting that we have done till now is all good so we have not got any error so if you want to save the response file you can save the response file so that's done click on install and it will start installing the database software that is going to take some time not much maybe some three to five minutes because the software is already extracted it's just going to relink the software to the oracle uh, os operating system so that's it's 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 going to take some time so let me pause the video and come back once the software is about to be installed even though we chose the root password we gave the root password it still will prompt you for this particular thing it will not do it silently so we have to click yes and once that is done the registration of oracle database was successful so that's all good so we have successfully installed the oracle software oracle database software as of now we have not yet created our database so let's now launch another window the first thing that we'll do is we will create our listener so using the net ca oracle net configuration assistant oracle net configuration assistant i'm going to create the the listener so click on next click on uh click on next and click on uh, the, you, you can choose the name listener you if you want to change the name of the listener that is completely fine you can choose the name listener click on next click on next use standard port if you want to change the port you can change the port you can give the different port if you want or you can choose the standard port i'm using the standard port click on next 
Would you like to configure another listener? No, click on next. And if everything goes fine, our listener will be started and click on finish. And now let's verify if our listener is up and running. Now I can just use listener CTL status and you can see our listener is completely up and running. I don't have to give the name of my listener. My name of the listener is listener. I don't have to give the name of my listener because the diff only if you by default, it will look for listener and you can see the listener is up and running zero days, zero days and that's all good. So li listener configuration is all good. So I fixed my Xming. So let me launch the DBCA. Now that we have created our listener. So to create the listener, we use NetCA. Remember, we use the NetCA and we configured the listener using the NetCA. To create our database, we will be using the DBCA. So let's type DBCA, Database Configuration Assistant. Let's type this. So it's going to launch this particular utility. Using the DBCA, we are going to create our database. So let me maximize this. Create a database. Click on Next. The, the, it will choose Advanced Configuration. So it will not choose this. Click on Next. The general purpose single instance database, that's what we have to choose. The single instance database, general purpose. Click on next. The name of the database that I'm using is OEM rep. So give the name. We do not need container database. If we were using 21C, we have to mandatory use container database. However, this is 19C. We can still use the non CDB architecture. So I'm using non CDB architecture OEM rep. Click on next. Use the following. The thing I'm going to create my database in dbd slash aura data. So this particular directory probably it's not there. So let's create that. That's done. Created the directory. This is where the database will be created. The database files, the system, sysox, uh, the uh, data file undo and temp file will be created. Let's click on next. No need of if you want to specify the fast recovery or archiving, your choice. I am not going to choose them. It's your choice if you want to choose it. Listener, the default listener that we created, it has chosen that listener. That is the good news. Click on next. The database vault and label security, we do not need these options. So uncheck them. The SGA, it has chosen 3603 and 1204. I'm going to change it to 2048 and 1024. This is perfectly fine. We can reduce the PGA to a slightly smaller value, but perfectly fine. The sizing character sets, uh, connection mode, this all dedicated, character set same. Sizing all, I'm not going to change anything. Click on next. The EM, we don't need EM. This, we are going to, this is the inbuilt EM. We don't need it. Click on uncheck it. If you want to check it, that's perfectly fine. There is no harm in having that enabled. Give the same password, it will give us the I'm using a password as password. It will give this particular warning. When I click next, also it will give this warning. We can safely ignore that particular warning. We can change this password at a later point if we want. So I'm giving the simple password. Create a database. Click on next. It will give us the summary. If if you want to review the summary, you can review the summary. If you are happy with whatever option that we have given, if you are happy, click on save response file. If you want to save the response file, save it and click on finish, which will now create your OEM rep database on this particular machine. The database creation is going to take some time. So let me pause the video and come back once the database is created. You can, you can verify the alert log for while the database is getting created. You can verify the alert log or you can also verify the DBSA log. You can make sure that everything is happening as per your expectation so you can Verify the log location. This is the OEM rep alert log and this is the DBCA log. Both are there. You can copy this particular location and you can do tail minus F. You can see this particular log or you can also look at the, the OEM alert log, the database alert log. You can see at that log as well. So you can watch that particular log while it is happening. So you can see it's this is the log and the, the database creation is going to take some time so let me pause the video and come back once the database is created so the database is created as you can see uh, the log file shows everything is good so that's all good so let me close close this log file 
So the database is created uh, and let me close this. And now if I do, I don't have to do aura env as I already mentioned, I have already set these particular variables. So I could just launch the SQL plus as CCTVA and that which I should be able to connect to the database. So let me show it to you. The 19.3 database select name comma open mode from V dollar database. And you should be able to see that I have got a database called OEM rep. It's in read write mode. So that's all good. What we have to do is this particular database we have to now set some particular parameters and these are the mandatory parameters for our our oem so these are the, these particular parameters are required for the oem so i'm going to we have to disable the auto stats collection etc etc set the minimum min servers etc so let me do that so why i'm doing this all of this is because when i want to when oem runs it will pre-check the database and we should not have any errors so that's all done so let me now shut down the database and start up again so let me shut because we have changed some parameters in the in the in the we have sorry okay i thought i can do that on single line i was too greedy so that's all done so the the parameters are the allow insert update check Shared pool size to 600, parallel max servers to 8, mean servers to 0, session cache servers to 200, processes to 300, and disable of auto optimizer stats collection. If we don't set these particular parameters, then OEM, when it checks whether the OEM software, when it checks whether the database is ready for the OEM repository, it will complain that is the reason why I'm setting these particular parameters well before. So the database is opened so all the options will look good so now we are at the final step we have done everything we are at the final step of actually installing our oem software so let's let me go to this particular location this is where i have downloaded those file files these are the five files if i show when i showed you oracle download oem 13.5 for linux you should be able to see that we got we get a result of five files so if you see here okay where is it where is it okay so for linux so you can see these are the five files em 13.5 linux bin these are those five files all that we have to do we don't have to extract and nothing we don't have to do anything we just have to choose this bin file run that particular bin file as dot slash and then internally it's going to extract that particular file and it's going to launch the oem installation the gui installation for us it's going to take some time the this particular because it has to extract these are pretty big files it's going to take some time so let's let's wait for it to launch the installer so you see you see it says it says that it's extracting the installer so you can see that it's doing it right now so give it wait for a minute just uh, maybe one or two minutes let me pause the video and come back once the installer is launched i do not want to waste your time so we are almost ready yeah so the installer is launched we can we can choose any of these options so let me maximize this we can choose simple install advanced install or install software with only with plugins so whichever option that you want to choose i will go with simple install if you choose with advanced install we have to specify too many options so to make my life easier i'll go with simple install so click on next updates definitely i don't have any update so i'm going to skip it click on next is going to check all of these prerequisites and you can see that all of the prerequisites are succeeded which means whatever settings that we have done at the kernel level whatever settings that we have whatever packages that is required all of those packages are installed that is why it is very important that we follow the prerequisites and we install all of the packages so you can see everything is succeeded so there is no warning click on next middleware home location we can 
choose to browse so but remember that i already created a directory for the middleware home so this is the directory that i created for the middleware home copy that particular directory and paste it here so oem middleware the agent again i created another directory for the oem agent so let's create that make sure that these directories are empty if these directories are not empty it's going to complain them so if i go here and if i it's going to complain that it's not empty so make sure both of the oem agent and oem directories these are completely empty make sure that they are empty so that's all done so that we have empty directories for the middleware oem agent Just click on next administrator password give some complex administrator password it will not accept simple password so give some complex administrator so if i give a very simple password so let's try that so if i do that if it will it will not allow me to let's see okay let's try to give i give a very simple password let's see if it allows us the database host name this is where our oem database is running so oemdb.com port is the listener port 1521 the database sys the sid is oem rep and the password for oracle we kept it as password that was simple click on next and you see it doesn't go on the next because it is highlighting on this so give some complex password that you can whatever complex password that you use so give some complex password i've given some complex password click on next it's going to now connect to our database and check if our database is fine so as you can see all of these things it has checked the database and it has checked that the settings are all good and everything is success succeeded so that is the reason why we executed this particular parameters and now our database is completely fine with oem repository so there are no more changes it has all these settings are succeeded click on next and it says it gives us this warning which is fine click on ok and configure oracle software library so we will configure the oracle software library to be swlib that's completely fine click on next now take a screenshot of this for your future reference again this particular op uh, things will be shown to you at a later point in time however it is always better to keep a screenshot of these settings and we will click on install and now that if everything we can take a look at the log file as well so we can take a look at the log file what it is doing and it's now reached to a stage where it's going to install the oem software if this soft step is completed our oem so server will be up and running so let's wait for this particular software to get installed again this is pretty big step it on my machine it normally takes one hour i do not have a powerful laptop i will repeat i do not have a powerful laptop my laptop is just a four core machine so it's not even octa core it's a four core machine so it's a it's a very low end machine so i'm still able to do this you should be able to do it on your machines so the the software is going to take some time it's going to take one hour i do not want you guys to watch this particular screen for one hour so let me pause the video and come back once the oem software is completely installed so after almost an hour we have oem com installation completed and it's asking us to execute this particular script as the root user so this we will log into the root user uh, which i have already done and let's run that particular script so let's copy that particular script so select that script copy that paste it here and this is the script that it's asking us to root run as a root so let's do that and it's going to take not much few minutes again give it a minute that's done so we have now successfully installed our oem server so let's click on ok it gives us the this is very important save this for your take a screenshot or save this information somewhere this is very important because this will give you the 
port number for your OEM admin console, etc., etc. So keep a note of this. This information is also available in setup install setup info.txt. So that will be a file here. You can browse this particular file and you can look at that particular file. So we save this. Make sure you save this particular file as well. So that's done. So now let's let's see if our OEM is launching. It it might take some time for the OEM to start. So let's see if it has launched. So launch any browser of your choice. So finally, I said once the OEM is installed, we will implement OEM start and stop script. So let's actually check if our OEM is running. So give the IP address of your OEM server in your favorite browser. So whichever this is the IP address that we gave, then you give the port number, which is 7803 slash EM. That's let's give that if the OEM is before doing that, let's make sure that we are able to ping to that particular server ping 192.168.1.109. And we are able to ping. However, the I think the OEM is not at started. So let's do this. Let's create a script start and stop script. So let's do this. So this first thing, it will start the listener if it is already not started, then it's going to start the OEM rep database. If you see startup and then it's going to verify that it is started, then it's going to start the OMS. We have to give the location of the OEM middleware home bin uh, and under that you will find EMCTL. So we'll say EMCTL start OEM, OMS and then you will say EMCTL start agent. Remember, uh, you can remember that, uh, remember that once all of this is done, you can verify the status of your listener, verify the status of your the OEM and you verify the status of agent using the EMCTL state status command. To see the status, you have to go to the OEM agent and uh, status of the agent, you have to go to the OEM agent directory and to see the status of OEM, you have to go to the OEM middleware. So let's take this, let's take this particular script and let's create that particular script. So let's do that clear and cd it's i'm in the home directory vi let's say start underscore oem dot sh name can be your choice let's enter this so this is the script small script that i'm going to do make this script executable also we will create a stop oem script uh, so that whenever we want to stop the oem exactly similar script but this time it's going to stop the OEM, stop the agent, stop the listener and finally stop the database. So it's going to do it in the other way around. So this is how I have set up the OEM stop script. So let's save this again, make this particular script executable. That's done. And now what we will do is we will try to run the start OEM script. So listener is already started. The database is already started. It's going to take, let's see if the OEM is, I guess the OEM did not start. So let's start the OEM. And if the OEM started, we should be able to connect to OEM. Again, the OEM start is going to take some time. It's a heavy software. It's a big software. That particular step takes time. So let's let me pause the video and come back once our OEM is started. So the OEM has started, as you can see, the Oracle Management Server OMS is up, JVMD is up, WebTL is up, and also the agent is also up. So we can see, keep a, keep a note of these log files for future reference, the OEM agent log file, etc, etc. And if we are good, we will now be, we should be able to connect. So the IP address of your host machine, dot 7803 this particular information is here if you see the it says uh, the oemdb.com which is 109 uh, the ip address of this i if i show you i have config grep inet you can see that it is 192.168.1.109 which i have given here slash 7803 slash em that's what i have given and if i press enter now we will be 
presented with this particular warning because of the SSL certificates, etc. If you want, we can configure them, but I'm not configured. Accept the risk and continue. And it will present us with this particular screen. So give the sysman and give the password that we configured, the complex password, not the Oracle database password, the sysman password. Click on login. If it will prompt us for the license, if the password is correct, we will get, it will ask for the license agreement, accept the license, I accept. And if, if we, the, everything is okay, then we can see that we have successfully launched or logged into our OEM server. So this was the lengthy tutorial on how to install OEM server OEM 13.5 with Oracle 19C on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.8. I hope you found this particular tutorial useful. I hope you will be able to launch your uh, you will you'll be able to install your OEM server in your project or in your personal laptop if you need to learn this. In the next tutorial, we will see how to add the target uh, and how to add the database to the OEM server so that we can monitor that particular database from the OEM server, which we will cover in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. See you in next tutorial and bye bye.